Ooh, hey kids, you were about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that no one of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. The only podcast... Wait, hold on. I, 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 I think my internet's cutting, cutting out. Can hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith. Com. I would like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as antiarrhythmic toxicity and spooky, so I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Hey, Dr. London, Dr. London, real quick before before we really get into the show, Uh um, I have to show you this video. Okay. Okay, I've got to show you this video. Oh my gosh, let me... Okay, it's loading. It's buffering. Uh, it's it, so funny. It, it's gonna make you. It's gonna make you laugh your socks off. Okay, still, it's still buffering. So still, do I just? Oh, do you want to just show me after? No, 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 dude. You're gonna like it so much that you're gonna be mad if I show it to you later because you're gonna be like, "Oh, I wish I saw this before." Because it's like a cat. It's like a cat, and it it meets a. You'll you'll see. Okay. And it's buffering. Okay, I just feel like this is. It seems it seems like it's gone less percent than it was. Yeah. Before. Yeah. No, I. Let me let me go check the the internet connection real well, quick. I... Let me let, let, let me just do the hold hold on. Okay. Just can you can you just take a pause? Just uh you know talk about talk about your day or whatever to the listeners. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Let me go back to the the IT closet. Okay. Talk about my day. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, go ahead. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. So I woke up, and so this morning was actually kind of weird because, like, normally I'll have, uh, like, well, it's you know it's the weekend, so normally I'll like wake up right, and just kind of stretch a little bit. But today there was this knocking at the do- well, the scraping at the door. So I went. To- I'm sorry, Cameron. Cameron, are you doing all right? All right. This wire goes in here and this wire goes right here and this if we do if we put this wire here then we can just put this wire and if we do this wire here so if we do and then we plug this wire. Hey, Doctor London, how's the how's the connection? Are you getting the video? I I'm not getting the. Okay, I don't think I need the video. I'm not. It's really it's All just right. buffering. And if we if we plug in the this port to this other one, we can. Okay, okay it's just and off and. <laughs> on all right all right i'm coming back coming out of the it closet all right all right i think it's good all right now watch this video see okay well you said it was a a cat meeting a a, uh the ground the cat met the ground oh yeah it was like just like thrown down by that dude and you thought that that i would just that I would just be cracking up at that? I thought you would have to see it. Like, the second I saw it, you would need to see it. Oh, we can move on. It's animal cruelty is what that looks like. Aww. We've got to do something about that IT closet, though. Yeah, yeah, well, and... The wolf... I don't mind most of the things in there. The wolf is causing a lot of issues. I think that's what's causing most of the internet issues. Oh, okay, because I was just... You know, while you were gone, I was sharing a little bit about... There was something scratching at my door th- this morning. I didn't know there was a wolf p- 
prowling. I had no idea that there was a wolf around. The IT closet is for like sort of nerdy types. And what's the nerdiest of all animals? Like, uh, which which animal are you gonna find? Which animal are you gonna find at the library late at night? Being like, oh, uh, does what does blue and yellow make green? Doing my calculations to find out. It's probably a wolf, right? Yes. So he's probably back there tinkering with wires and Ethernet cords and LAN mines so and you, Wi-Fi. So you think that and wolves are the nerdiest of animals? Because I would have thought like. Besides owls. Owls I can see more. They're portrayed that. Uh, anyway, we have a wolf in the IT closet. Yeah, I mean, it's just creepy back there, that's all. Which is perfectly fitting. Uh, for today. Because what is what is this week, Dr. London? Uh, yeah, so this week, um, I guess there's... Uh, so I have I've rounds to do at the hospital. Uh, what else did I have going on? Um, the weather's been... Like it's it's been colder. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, but everything that I had going on has kind of been canceled. Like, but what is what, what is what what is this Saturday? It's the last day of October. What does that usually mean? Uh, oh, November is coming. That means we have Thanksgiving on the way. Oh my gosh, you are so lame, Doctor London. It's Halloween. Yes. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's right, Dr. London. It's Halloween. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess I guess it is. Um So that's not really What are you going as, Dr. London? Are you I I assume you dress up while you're doing your rounds, right? Uh n- no, no normally. Like it's it's kind of run of the mill. So I dress up as a doctor, I guess. You could say that. Ah, so sort of like a like a meta or method style of of Halloweening. I like it. It's very edgy. It's very raw. Well, it's sort of the standard method of dress. Like people dress in different ways as doctors, but like that's you know like I wear a lab coat. You know. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, I'm actually wearing my costume today. Can you and you look at what I'm wearing? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, notice the the red beanie that I'm wearing. Yeah, but it's filled. Like it's out of the beanie is is that Okay, I I don't know what animal it that is. That's just a growth on my head. That, that's irrelevant, but the hat, the hat is important. Okay, yeah. And then notice I'm wearing I'm notice I'm wearing a tan suit, right? The beanie with the tan suit. Yeah. Who so who am I obviously? I'll let, go ahead and guess. Um you're uh you're you're It's obvious. Should be obvious. You're a lawyer? No. I'm a spe- I'm 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 specific. I'm more specific than that. And I'm not a lawyer. That Okay, from Breaking Bad, that one Better Call Saul. Are you Better Call Saul? No. No. Look. He's always wearing a beanie. Dr. London, I'm Bajak Kustain Obama. Oh. I am the I am the combination of Jacques Cousteau and Barack Hussein Obama. Wow. Red beanie, right? Tan suit. Remember? Yeah. So do you do you always dress as combinations of costumes? Oh, I mean, usually, yeah. Yeah. But and then this you... is the first time that it's actually the names have sort of been mashed together. Oh, okay. So that's like one year I was Brittany Murphy combined with Napoleon, like the historical figure. Yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Yeah, no one understood that at all. Aww. But this one Whereas this one I think is clear. I think it's a great conversation starter. Everyone's gonna understand. I'm gonna be all the different parties that I'm gonna be at. People are gonna be just laughing so hard at it. And I'm just really, really excited to take this out on the town. Come on, you gotta go with me. Let's let's dress you up real quick. What are you gonna wear? Uh, pff, what am I gonna wear? Uh, what? Well, so, so I was gonna stay in. I thought for Halloween. I don't know if that's because you know it's not really safe to go door to door. No, 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 Doctor London. We're going out, and we're going out. 
We're going into other people's houses to steal candy from their pantries. That's how we're going. This is going to be the wildest trick-or-treating you've ever done, Dr. London. Let's move on. I'm going to figure out your costume throughout during this episode. Before this episode is over, I'm going to have a costume for you. Okay, you can try to I get strong arm that. Okay, that was our producer, Cameron. Also with us is Digital in the House. DJ Dylan in the House. Jock Music. Jock Boys for Life. It's the motherfucking Jock Doc Podcast. Yes. It's the mother f***ing just about podcast. expect a special guest that's right dr london i would say one of the most special guests we've ever had on this show ever see i feel like you've said that a few times before but i guess this is now up to this point now the most special yeah i mean back then i couldn't have seen the future i'm not I'm not psychic. Okay. I know I, I know it's like Halloween right now, so there's sort of a supernatural bent to the air, but that doesn't mean that I can read minds or know who is a more special guest than someone else. Now, is next week's guest more special than our current guest? Absolutely. Okay. And is the guest after that even more special than that guest? 100%. Yes. At least in that part of the timeline because yeah what's more special because we just keep getting better yeah if you're not getting better you're moving backwards yes okay i learned that from from book i i assume joe rogan i don't i have no idea okay well um before we move on the only thing that i that usually enters my brain is stuff joe rogan sort of coughs out Mm -hmm. well yeah because he doesn't speak it's just more like a blob of thoughts are forming in here and he just sort of vomits them out mm-hmm. and then I absorb them into my body, which is science. Mm-hmm. And it's, it is strange to see the effect he has on you. Yeah. But in any case, um, before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So um, I found out last week that we actually have, Hey, you stole that joke. That's me. That's like me trying to be like my hero, Joe Rogan, in that video shaming Carlos Mencia 15 years ago. Oh, you stole that joke. Okay. So, uh, well, good impression. Yeah. You should try out for SNL. No, it's who I am now. Uh, okay. Just go ahead. Just well, keep going. So I, I found out you last week that. that we actually have a real physical mailbox where listeners have been leaving questions via fan mail. Um, so... Are you sure it's a mailbox? Oh, for, like there's no doubt. So uh, there was a dog sleeping in it. Like it was kind of a, it was like a miniature, I guess, barn shaped thing in the back of uh, mm-hmm. my neighbor's yard. And there was a dog. But like once I shooed the dog away, I found all this mail for us. Yeah. I mean, that's a mailbox. Yeah. Yeah. And there was like, there was food around that. Yeah. It was or dog food really nearby. So all that was a little bit weird. But once I, cleaned it out the the dog it was fine so anyway uh so i picked out one of the letters there from random the note reads quote howdy honey i really want to meet with great passion and my age is 23 yo 
Do you want to know how many toys I can put in my bum? Or maybe you'll want to help me a bit in this? Reply me faster. My figure needs a warm hands and fingers. My images and links are in my profile. Need to follow this link. End quote. And you got this as a physical piece of mail? Yeah. What? Why, why are you confirming that? I didn't, was, was, it, it keeps talking about links. I just didn't know. Oh, is it talking about like sausage links or well, like okay. the links, like talking about golf? Okay, well, or? remember there was a dog there. So I assume that if whatever sausage or whatever. If there was sausage links attached to the message, of course it would be yeah. the dog. That is right. Sorry, I'm not the doctor. I'm not the doctor. And sometimes I forget that. But no, no, that's, that is a good point because it the the note ended with need to follow this link and if the dog ate the link i need to catch that dog we gotta catch that dog and we gotta i mean we gotta get that sausage out of its belly before he digests yeah, it or maybe digesting is part of it so wow you know i don't sometimes i don't take it the time to appreciate from our listeners like this is really there was a lot more to this than I gave credit for. Um, so yeah. thank you. Thank you to this listener for reaching out. And as for your questions uh, about putting toys in a bump, um, I, maybe maybe that's part of the dog thing. So I, I feel like this will be revealed once we hunt down the dog. Um, anyway. Oh, uh, we we love to hear back. And from you know, I I you know, I just want to say I don't think there's anything wrong with having sort of a special place to sort of keep your toys safe. You know, like I, I you know, I think you know, let's say you've got some Barbies or some Hot Wheels or whatever. I mean, whatever you have, I, I you know, I'm not I, you know, what what's the alternative? You just throw it on the floor. So if you want to keep it wherever you want, just to keep it safe, so it's not getting scratched or whatever, I say go for it. And that. That makes a lot of sense because, you know, they did say, reply me faster. My figure needs warm hands and fingers. So I, I think action figure is what they're referring to there. Oh, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, and I mean, I got to assume it's going to be like an action figure, probably like from the new Succession line. Mm-hmm. All the characters of Succession just battling it out finally. About time, honestly. About time. I've, I'm so excited to get the new action figure set. All right. Well, so to this listener, thank you for listening. And, um, you know, we look forward to, to getting more fan mail in that mailbox. All right. Uh, now for today's medical topic, asbestosis. Asbestosis is characterized by diffuse interstitial fibrosis of the lung caused by inhalation of asbestos fibers. It has a predilection for the lower lobes of the lung, um, and it develops insidiously, typically over 15 to 20 years after exposure. So this exposure can be uh, in the mining and the milling of the fibers, in industrial application of asbestos, and that's with work with cement, friction materials, Ooh, insulation. Costume idea. Costume building. idea for you, Dr. London. Okay. Because you've mentioned it a lot. So I think it's I think it's kind of up your alley. You seem to talk about it a lot asbestos. When you say that I, I seem to talk about it a lot. So asbestos is the medical oh, it comes topic. up all the time. It's like gotta be it's gotta be like one of your favorite things. I feel like I'm not even sure I've mentioned it before on this podcast until today. You talk about it constantly. So let's think about getting an asbestos costume. And so you're gonna be sort of like, a, what is that? Is that like a is that like a video game or is that like a is that, no, that's it's, like a drug or like a like a it's liquid? A, um, it's a fiber, like it's a very small type of fiber. It's like uh, microscopically, it's uh, it looks. I guess I think it looks like dumbbells, if I'm if I remember correctly, sort of. Mm. Um, okay, so a fiber. So you're talking about like kind of like a small little string, Dr. London, you're just a skinny little string bean. That's your costume. Huh. I so, well, I, I don't know if I'm All right, I'm just going to write the, I'm just going to write these down. We're going to go costume 1 
guaranteed choice is bestest all right yeah i guess you can write what you need to for now um i would say uh anyway also um you can be exposed through non-occupational settings with airborne asbestos such as regular exposure to soiled work clothes brought home by an asbestos worker or renovation or um you know demolition of asbestos containing buildings uh but asbestos um it causes an increased risk of bronchogenic carcinoma which is increased even further if the patient smokes asbestosis also increases the risk oh i mean this is another one of your favorite things is smoking that now you know i know you talk about that like a ton smoking yes because it's such that's like one of your favorite subjects to talk about so why don't we get yourself like you're like a you're a discarded cigarette butt right so maybe there's like a little lipstick on you and it's sort of like a little smoldering you know what i mean yeah i so i don't want to promote smoking in any way because then you can go up you can go up to people at the party and you can be like hey you want to do you want to bum one and but you're like talking about yourself oh okay i thought you were gonna say like i'd point at my bum because it's a cigarette butt or something i mean you can do whatever you want you're an adult yeah so asbestosis also increases the risk of um malignant mesothelioma symptoms and physical findings are non-specific interstitial lung disease so the diagnosis is based uh, on clinical features and a history of exposure to asbestos um and that's that's really a lot of it is just asking the right questions about work exposure chest x-ray shows hazy infiltrates with bilateral linear opacities and may show pleural plaques especially in the lower lung regions uh, high resolution ct scan may show subpleural linear deposits of varying length parallel to the pleura uh, it could show parenchymal fibrosis, coarse honeycombing and advanced disease, and pleural plaques, among other findings. No specific treatment has been identified for asbestosis. Management includes supportive care with an emphasis on smoking cessation. There's that word again. I f- I mean, we've definitely figured out your costume because you're obsessed with this subject. Which, And I always say dress how you feel. Dress for the job you want, and the job you want, Dr. London, more than being a doctor, is being a big old cigarette. Yes. Okay, well... And I, I, who, you might be that one day in a, in a future life. I don't know who, who, I have no idea what the future holds. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to be a cigarette, or asbestos, because these, these are all sort of things that I don't want to promote. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So while you're wearing the asbestos cigarette costume, you could be holding like a big red circle with a line through it. That's that's better. That's a big step up actually. That's that would be a clear message for smoking especially. Yeah. Uh, and I have a, like I have a huge big red circle with a line through it. It's heavy as hell. Okay. Well, uh, it's like 160, 170 pounds. So, and you, so you're going to have to be carrying that all night. But if you think about the conversations, it's going to start with people, Dr. London. Well, okay, well in that I case. I can just imagine us at the hottest party in town. And, oh, who is that over there? It's Amanda Bynes. And she's eyeing you because she's saying, where did that big red heavy circle with the line through it come from? And she's got to ask, right? Well, I feel like I'll just, if I decide to do that, then I would probably just make my own. You know what I mean? Since, uh, since yours sounds cumbersome and heavy. You're not going to get an equivalent quality with any other brand. Trust me. This is Harry's big red circle with a line through it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so. Trust me, this cost me a pretty penny. So anyway, management the prettiest penny I've ever collected. Management includes supportive care with an emphasis on smoking cessation, uh, avoidance of further asbestos exposure, uh, pneumococcal and influenza vaccination, and um, you know supplemental oxygen if that's if that's needed. But uh, 
Yeah, smoking cessation is a, a point worth emphasizing over and over. Because it causes a lot of preventable things. Yeah, you're obsessed with it. Yeah, well, that's... You know, it's preventable, so... Anyway, but we can we can move on from there. All right, Cameron, you said that we have a special guest today. Is that right? That's right, Dr. London. This is the most special guest that has ever even stepped foot into this studio, Dr. London. That's even wow. put an inch of their toe across the threshold. It's our special guest. Hello there. Hello. Hi, sorry, you sound a little... Hi. Do you need to take a drink of water or something? You sound a little hoarse there. Well, I'm I'm Joe the Bro Johnson, and I have a 90-year-old voice box implanted into my 20-year-old bro body. Oh, yeah, I was wondering. I didn't know, because, I mean, you look just fit as hell. And so when you were, oh yeah, I mean, when you were struggling to even just push words out, I, I, I was wondering. Yeah, no, no. I mean, does that hurt to talk yeah. like that? Oh no! Like this voice box has been talking for ninety years. I mean, it could handle anything. All the best keggers, you know, everything, man. Okay. Well, hello, Joe the Bro Johnson. Uh, my name is Dr. London Smith. Dot com. So it's a it's a ninety year old person's vocal cords. Yes. So just just to give you some background, I had a kegger incident and my vocal box was crushed. Ooh. Yeah, totally. totally what happened? Knocked out. Well, you know, long story short, you want the kegger to not drop on your voice box, but one thing led to another thing, and. My bros just, like, dropped it on my throat. Yeah, that does sound like it would be a long story. Yeah, I don't remember much of it. I'm glad you shortened it. It's on, it's on TikTok, and it's on Snapchat and everything. Yeah. Anyways, like, I needed to get my voice box replaced, and I went to, you know, on 41st Street, um, under the underpass of the bus terminal, um, there's this guy who would do replacements of any organ you want. And I went with the budget option, you know? Right. Um. Oh, you're talking about Dr. Ox. Yes! Yeah! Dude, I love that guy. He's so great. He's the one who added my extra toe. Here, look. Oh, dude! Oh! I'm thinking about getting a seventh one, too. That is so sick! Yeah, it looks it looks ill. Oh, yeah, and I've I've been incredibly sick since, it, since I've got that surgery, unwell. too. Yeah, bro. So, I mean, it's literally, it's sick as hell. Yeah, it's ill as shoot. You know, the less green it costs when you got the gangrene. That's what he always says. I've got that hanging up in my in my garage office. Heck yeah, dude. So, I mean, why did you end up with a 90-year-old's voice? Was that the only option, or is that something you really wanted to do? Uh, you know, like, Halloween's around the corner, and I thought, you know... I could be a dumb bro, you know? So, I just wanted, like, the oldest and gnarliest guy's voice to be mine. So I could, like, scare all those sorority chicks, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa, you, yeah. If you really... I mean, that's pretty genius. And this is sort of a weird question. It's sort of a shot in the dark, really. But was your voice, prior to this, maybe not as gnarly as as cool is that my voice before this was like like split down right down the middle between mary poppins and the grinch and oh wow it it was just a horribly you can't place that voice you know so i really love that i'm totally like mary poppins and the grinch that is that's one of those lines that every time you try to walk it it's gonna be a tough walk just the balance. Yeah, they were like, are you gonna like Chimchamarie or like what, you know? Maybe that's a different thing. Yeah, well, I mean, your voice, I, I, I'm not as familiar. But at least you have, you know, the maybe the the wisdom of a storyteller is in your th- is in your throat now. Yeah, totally. Like, when I start to lose consciousness, it just starts to talk about, 
you know, the old war and stuff. It's pretty creepy. Huh. Oh, wait, so you don't have full control over the vocal cords? Oh, like, when I'm awake, you know, I'm totally here. Like, this is me. But, like, if I get yeah, another yeah. kegger, you know, I might just start saying some, like, 1920s shit. Oh, wow. Like, what? Like, yo, that that Model T Ford is lit, you know? That wow. kind of stuff. Yeah. My my great grandfather was always talking about how lit those were. Doctor Lennon, have you seen this with all the the vocal I, cord so transplant clarify, surgeries you've done? I'm not, you know, I I'm not super familiar with tran vocal cord transplant surgeries in general. That doesn't sound like a because you're saying this is maybe a little too radical. That does make sense. Doctor Ox, who is you know my favorite surgeon, he he does. Uh, sort of live a little on the wild side, I could say. Oh, yeah. With his... Totally. With his okay. practice. He said that something about, you know, because it, it's his signature to add some something called bovine DNA in all his, like, subjects. I don't know what that means, but, like, he's like, I'm an ox, and I'm going to make sure you're part ox. Is this Dr. Ox... Dr. Bovine, is he a licensed physician? Because that seems to be the real issue here. He drove me back home, so yeah, he's got a license. Yeah, that makes sense. So he, he drove me okay, back home, I guess, too. Should I be more specific? Yeah. A medical license? And it was like in an 18-wheeler. I mean, it was like in the back of an 18-wheeler. I didn't sit in the cab with him. Oh, dude. But I mean, so that that he's got to have a special license just for that. So it's not even just a basic driver's yeah. license. Oh yeah! Oh oh! I I yeah! He he has a medical marijuana card. Okay, so I guess that's what I'm a bit confused about. So, um, so he's it sounds like a a back alley surgery kind of thing. And me and him, we watched uh, License to Kill together, like the James Bond movie. There you go. So, Doctor London, well, okay, he's got and- great taste. So speaking of movies, maybe you're not licensed. Um, so our our guest here, Joe the Bro Johnson, uh, when he was coming in, he uh, handed me this VHS copy of the the heroic tale of Joe the Bro Johnson, and specifically the exploits of Doctor Ox. And so it sounds like you're promoting back alley surgeries that could be dangerous. Well, you could call it that way, but I look at it as a budget option for the discerning American. And, and... Wow, yeah, Doctor, that is very true. Dr. London, you work for a very expensive and very elitist industry. And I mean, people are struggling right now, Dr. London. Maybe this is a real solution. And why do you talk so down yeah, on it's, back it's more that because the surgeries i find so much cool stuff yeah. in my out yeah, dude. lots of boxes of things lots of sticky things lots of smelly things it's just like an entire world of adventure back there and you're over here from your from your ivory tower saying oh that stinks so bad. Get it out of here. It came from the alley. You're talking down on it. Yeah, well... And that's how you've been talking about my extra toe. Aww. Over and over again. How about how it stinks. How it squirts stuff out sometimes. How you can't look at it without throwing up in your mouth. Because this is how you view alleys, which are so I, perfectly well, my, normal place to hang out. Just to add to that question earlier, so the VHS copy you handed me, was this part of... Like helping the cost of the, because you said it was a low budget surgery. Were you just, did you make a movie with a, about the experience to to offset the cost of the surgery? Yeah. So so there are two general options here. You could pay a flat rate of five hundred dollars, or you could pay fifty bucks and agree to appear in ten videos, just ten. Of you just doing random stuff. And, you know, I chose that option because I only had 50 bucks. Okay. And is there a reason why it's 
only because it says on here exclusively available on VHS. Yeah, um, it's it's hard to get DVDs nowadays. Okay, so yeah, that's true. There's a lot of retro throwback Doctor London. I know you're not you're not cool and with it, and you have no idea what's going on in terms of pop culture. But yeah, I mean, if you took a look at your back alley, you might see a VHS player or some or something like that over there. Yeah, maybe instead of spitting on the people hanging out in the back alley, you talk to them. And you're going to find out that, yeah, they've still got Top Gun on, on VHS. Yeah, I, I guess, okay, so for me, it's not so difficult to believe that someone would already have a VHS tape. It's more that they would want another VHS tape. Y- you know, like, like, why would you advertise with that? Because I don't know if you've heard about streaming technology. Are you kidding me? I had uh, Netflix and chill all the time, bro. Like, dude, like... Dude, you're just like looking down on me. Ugh. Just because just because I'm a backstreet kind of person. Dr. London. A backstreet boy, I guess you could say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, backstreet boy. Yeah, maybe you could say that, Dr. London, and do you have an issue with that? Cuz it sounds like you do. Oh, I was I was making a little joke about I'm not Cameron, I know you don't listen to much music, but that was actually a band, the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, we know! You're saying that Joe the Bro here couldn't be in a band as good as the Backstreet Boys? God, you're so mean, Dr. Lennon. I don't understand why you insist on being this rude. Yeah, I'm... I'm... And I also want to say, in terms of in terms of paying Dr. Ox, he also does take Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. Yes, he does. Okay, so, so insurance companies say okay to this. Just okay. that one. All right. Well, um, well, th- this has all been very interesting. I feel like maybe we could go ahead and, ha- like, like. I mean, I want to hear what the video. Like, so you're talking about making these ten videos. Have you already have you already made all ten of them? I'm I'm in the middle of the third one, so I think we're looking at a brand new kind of project you know we're we're thinking next one's gonna be kind of a mockumentary like the office you know what i mean yeah it's a it's a mockumentary of what like you're gonna kick it you're gonna get a kick out of this okay it's it's a mockumentary about elitist doctors oh yes that's right oh man And, and we just we just talk about their foibles, you know? Like, they're people too. Yeah, and we're talking about like, oh, uh, uh, that person's not, the, you, you know, like I'm, I'm playing like an evil character who, eh, you know, is yeah. maybe like this high and looks like exactly like this guy over here. Well, I'm oh, pointing oh, at oh. Dr. London. Gonna... And he's like, exactly. oh, oh, anyone who doesn't have a... Have a have a have a doctor's coat is stupid. Yeah, yeah, like like five Lamborghinis, baby. I'm gonna run over all your uninsured ass. Like there's like a there's like a really asshole character in there. Actually, they're all that way. And, These are doctors. And yeah, and there's no good ones. All doctors are bad. And is this? Uh, I mean, you 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 say you're you're like. In the middle of producing this video, I mean, do you have yeah. people acting in it? Do you like how, what? What are the budgets for this? Like, how are you even shooting these videos? So, you know, it might involve me feigning interest in a podcast. Wink, wink. Okay, so to help promote it, your this is a way to advertise to save money on advertising. Oh, you just got broed. Oh, Dr. London. So I'm reading this, this VHS copy. Is this the first one you made? Yeah. Why is there a problem? Because it says, uh, like the title is covering up a botched surgery. And it's got all these like sort of, I guess, written out sound effects like ha ha or, you know, good one blorch uh you know kind of like the sort of cartoon action uh blurbs and it seems like 
maybe it's making light of the you know the the severity of uh malpractice oh, i didn't really think about that yeah but why would you think about that who cares yeah it's funny yeah no that's a good point yeah. uh i guess and i'm on, I'm on guess, tv that makes me yeah right. i guess from no. my perspective I want to explore a little more about the, the the like the vocal transplant surgery itself. You have these new vocal cords. You've got it for Halloween. Right. It sounds like you you just got this recently, right? Because the plan was, you know, Halloween's around the corner, so I gotta I gotta change this up, right? Exactly. Yeah, just just two weeks ago. Oh wow! Yeah, so they're was... they're nice and fresh. So what's the plan after Halloween? Do you have one? Um. I don't know. I think this could be kind of a grungy Santa Claus. Uh, Ooh, I like and that for Valentine's. So wait, so like I'm, yeah, I'm like a little kid. I'm asking for a present. Let's let's act this out real quick. Hey, okay. hey, grungy Santa, huh? can can I get uh like a denim uh vest? You know, like where the sleeves are cut off, and it's got like patches. Heck no, bro! Just kidding. Here it is. You have it on you? That's awesome. Heck yeah, dude. We can make anything happen. Ho, ho, ho! Okay, so... Okay, a question answered. I mean, that you've got a you've got a huge future ahead of you, it sounds like. Yeah, it also sounds like Joe the Bro Johnson might, might very much believe in a very active, you know, authentic Santa Claus, which is great, and... You know, for all of our listeners, that's that's really, that's good. What about Valentine's Day? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to be one of those singing carol, like, grams, you know? Like, like I've got a crossbow, and I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to shoot letters, like, at the foot, foot, like, right next to the feet of the people that want the uh, Valentine grams. But the message is tied on them. With a crossbow? Yeah, Oh, you mean like like Cupid's crossbow yeah, that he just, shoots? You know, bam, and you, you just feel like a little gust of wind, and there's like an arrow stuck right in, right in, right at your feet, and oh, it says, oh, it's from Charlie, and he loves you, and like you're a chick, so you're in love now. Wow. So really, I mean, this isn't just for you. You're actually changing the world for the better with your vocal cords. Yeah, man. Like, I got a long-term vision, you know? Just like you do with the seven toes. Like, that's a great investment. Well, and I think, you know, we don't know what the future is going to look like. No. And it's been a, tumultu- it's been a tumultuous year. And oh, yeah. I, you know, I think that making these sort of dramatic changes that, that Dr. Ox can offer can really help us going forward in the future. Like, me adding additional toes, well, guess what? That's going to help me balance... When the world becomes, uh, you know, there's earthquakes going on all the time. And we're going, whoa, everyone else is going, whoa, whoa. And here I am with my seven toes on one foot, just sipping just sipping a little cup of tea because I'm balancing so well. Yeah, man. And in your case, you've got this old man voice. You know, in the future, when everyone is gnarled by a nuclear explosions, you're going to fit right in with the mutants. Yeah, dude. Like... Here's the thing, all right? Like, the economy is going to shit, and, uh, you know, everyone's going to start declaring bankruptcies. But guess what? They can't take away your toes, man. That's illegal. That's so true. And they can't take away your voice. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the First Amendment, bro. And Dr. London... Does this piss you off to hear people being happy and planning for their future because you don't approve of their surgeon? Uh, I, I just more don't. Because the surgeon might be a little different than you. I just don't like, you know, unlicensed physicians practicing medicine in a way that could be unhealthy. Like, for instance, your toe is just spraying now. Like, it's not even leaking anymore. Yeah, it's, there's a soft mist that com- that's coming from the toe at any given time, sure. You don't find that refreshing? No, no, it's because it's like it's a thick, you call it a mist, but it like it seems to like th- there is a launching part, but there's also a gushing. 
I, to me, it's disconcerting. It's uncomfortable. But yeah, it's really it's it's more like yeah, not a mist in the sense of um, what you and I think of as the mist. I'm talking more like the Stephen King's The Mist. Right. Okay. Nice. So causing harm. Yeah, and there's just like various things coming out of it as it as it sort of squirts out. But this is, I mean, Doctor London, you say that this is an issue, and yet I'm going to be able to balance. I mean, we're talking about when the world is taken over by the ocean, and we're all living on surfboards, and that's how we have to get around. And you're going to be surfing from uh, from you know patient's house to patient's house, being like, "Whoa, I can't balance." And I'm going to be just sipping a little cup of tea, tiniest little cup of tea you've ever seen, not spilling a drop on my seven toes. Yeah, dude. Hang 14. That's the future. Okay. Well, you know, I feel like we've covered a lot today, but maybe it's about time. Um, so we've, we've kind of have these chores to do. Ah. Uh, yeah. You're right. We should do the chore wheel. Oh, I, I, I'll go ahead and explain it to you, Joe the Bro. We've actually just kind of been putting off all of our uh, errands and chores and duties over the last year just because we were lazy. Yeah. And um, TV was on, and we couldn't figure out how to turn it off. So anyway, so we've just had this huge stack of things to do on our to-do list. So we're just trying to knock off one each week. Just knock a new thing off the to-do list, get it over with. So... Dr. London, can you go ahead and uh, spin that okay. wheel, our All chore right, wheel? Step back. All right, and an oh, pumpkin carving contest. Okay. Oh, yes. Pumpkin carving contest. That that actually kind of works perfectly. I'm glad we didn't get this one like two yeah, months ago, no, you know? Oh, I, I guess it's left over from last year or something because. Uh, so, so the county fair, the local county fair here, uh, was shut down. Like they, they couldn't have a fair this year and it's such a highlight for the community that, you know, we've been asked by the event organizers to go ahead and host our own pumpkin carving contest. And so now we can just, between the three of us, we can, you know, critique each other's note, you know, the, the, I guess the winning points versus the others. So this is based on, as we all know, it's based on size. It's based on craft. It's based on creativity. So we're going to take into account all of these aspects whenever we judge each other's uh, pumpkins. Mm, Okay. Okay. So I'm, I mean, we just got to get to carving now, right? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, some, yeah, yeah. Let's just, let's just hop to it. Ready, set, and we have, uh, I guess DJ Dylan might want to speed this up because this is about a day long process to, to do it properly. Okay, here we go. Okay. okay. Let's just put... ah, here it goes. There we go. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. Nice. One day later. Just put that, it, and that wire goes there. Put that in there. there. Put that, okay, put right. that back you, in. Let me just shove oh, no. that down. The, you, 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 shove that down there. Ooh. Crap. Oh, that's good. Great. All right. And. <clears throat> yeah. Cherry on top. Did you guys, yeah, the, you know, do, do you feel okay about how your stuff turned out? Whoa. Oh, yeah, I'm super confident. I'm going to win this thing. Wait, is it competition? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess we'll start with... Okay, so so Cameron, what... For yours, if I could ask a question about what, I, what I'm seeing... Okay, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, so this year you made the choice that you've made in past years where it looks like you've... St- you tried to carve a watermelon instead of a of a pumpkin. What was your what was your thought process there? Well, you know, I think people always associate Halloween with orange. Yeah. And I just feel like that's a really limiting color and I don't look good in orange. 
So I'm trying to add a little more color and a little more spice into the holiday. And so I've been settling with different fruits. Obviously, you remember a couple of years ago when I carved a pear. Right. Um, and then, I mean, probably the worst one was when I was trying to... Uh, trying to carve a tomato, which is technically a fruit, Dr. London. Yeah, well, I, I think your worst one was the year whenever you tried to carve a bowl of pudding because, like, that to me wasn't even within the realm. You know, it wasn't a fruit or a vegetable at all. Yeah, and I'm still, I still am cleaning pudding out of uh, my backpack. Yeah. Okay, and so it just, it just can't, it just won't come up. And so, as yes, I chose a watermelon. I'm sorry if that disturbs you. Well, I just, but, uh, it's, I mean, what about what about the actual carving itself, Doctor London? Yeah. So I, um, and Joe, the brother, feel free to comment on here. But what I what I think I'm seeing is a very intricately carved uh, flea circus. Is that is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, this, like I see a lot of moving uh, parts. It's cool. He, yeah, I mean, to say it's a flea circus, I'm not exactly sure. Because I don't know what's moving it, and I didn't mess with it. Like, I didn't start moving those things or there, set anything There's definitely a bunch of small things crawling all over it. Okay. Oh, th- that is interesting. Because, yeah, I just made, like, a bunch of little circus, kind of fun little circus toys and whatnot, and, and just kind of shove that wait, in. Wait a second. But then when they started moving around, I was like, oh, this this is even better. How old is this watermelon? Ooh. Uh, I mean, how old can a watermelon be? So do you just mean it's like very old? I guess because Cameron, you do realize, so each of us has a fresh pumpkin. Yeah. You had to find... Your own watermelon for this. I don't know where you got it. Oh, I've been holding on to it. I found the perfect one. When? Oh, gosh. It was probably like 2000. Um, oh, I'm Wait. To think. Owl City was on the radio a lot. There's a, there's a Borders receipt stuck to this watermelon. The, the bookstore Borders. Yeah, I mean, that's where I, that's where I get most of my fruit. Oh, God. This, this is that... This is at least like ten years old, man. Yeah, it's fine. Well, do you want a slice? Do you, we eat this after we carve it, right? Yes. I, uh, mm. Okay. Well, and just to clarify one thing, just for our listeners, um, so a flea circus is sort of this old-fashioned idea where you would have what looks like a miniature circus done by fleas, but the idea is that fleas are so small, like you can't actually see them very well, so. It's really small contraptions that are electronic machinery moving around on their own made to look like fleas are performing. But for cameras, it appears that it's it's a legitimate flea circus because he it was more of a hands off approach. Yeah. And, you know, it's all natural. Yeah. Yeah. That that I think I can give to you here. And carbon neutral. so I, I've got to say, I think yours might be kind of disqualifying, not because, you know, of, of those positive things, but probably because it's not a pumpkin. Mm, no, I think you're just, you're splitting hairs here. Dr. Let, let, let's move on. I want to, I want to see uh, Joe the Bro's pumpkin. Yeah. Joe the Bro. Let's look at yours. Yeah. So yeah. as you can see, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a real finger. On on the top of this one. Yeah, that looks incredible. Where did you? How did you yeah. carve the pumpkin to look like a real finger? Oh, well, dude, here's a, here's a twist. It's 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 my finger. Oh. Okay, so the carving for you maybe got out of hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, in a, my my hand so got out of. Shape, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny, but also I wish you'd said something because well, we should put that on ice instead of incorporating it. Oh, uh, well, you know, a... Dr. Ox has a lot of great fingers on selection, so I don't I don't need I don't need Oh, yeah. You know, that finger. Yeah, you can replace that with like a monkey finger or really any finger you want. Like a, you can get one that's super exactly. big or super small. But I guess my question with yeah. your with your pumpkin is 
that seems to be all you did. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like a fine finger. It's a, I mean, is it even taped to the pumpkin or is it just resting on top of it? Kind of still dripping it's, blood. It's just it's just kind of resting on that stem-like nub that pumpkins come yeah, with. Yeah, the pumpkin nub. So what I'm let me know if I'm correct on this. Did you just start carving, cut your finger right off the bat, and then maybe pass out from the, you know, the shock of it, and then woke up and we were already judging? Whoa, that's a perfect diagnosis. It's like you're a doctor or something. Oh. oh yeah, it's just there's, there's a pool of blood and... There's your finger, and no progress made on the pumpkin. Are you sure you're not okay. Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> Damn, dude. But, I mean, that's not... None of this is disqualifying. So forget Dr. London's judgments and diagnoses and all those things. I mean, as we can see right now, we've got my flea circus watermelon, and we've got the... the. I mean, do you have a name for your for your presentation? Oh, yeah. Numero uno. Numero uno. Oh, man, that might actually trick the judges into voting number one. All right, well, Dr. London, let's look at yours. Okay, Okay, and okay, to clarify first, it's a pumpkin carving contest. Okay. So, So no one so far has managed to carve a pumpkin. Again, splitting hairs. Now, let's see. Let's see what you got. Okay. All right. Ah, there it is. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty. I mean, what is it? Yeah. Okay. It's. I mean, is so, that. So I, I did overshoot a little bit. And... Is that supposed to look okay, like a so... person? Yeah. And um, not an effigy. Just a person. Uh-huh. Um. But, yeah, so uh, it's, you know, one of my personal heroes. Oh, I've just never Which, seen a someone look that disgusting. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's Halloween, uh, so I guess that, that works is, for the Is theme. the person dead? Is, is, it the, is it how they look like in the grave? Yeah, is this after they've been rotting for maybe a couple weeks? Yeah, so this is Einstein. Oh. After, like, how he currently is. Oh, What's that okay. thing coming out of his mouth? Dude. Well, you know he makes that, that silly face with his tongue? That smile? That kind of thing? It's like a weird growth. It's... Yeah, so, I mean, he's been dead a long time, and things have grown into and around him, I assume. So, uh... I mean, I, anyway, I got to think this is disqualified, right? Yeah, this this is it, very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. It's very ugly. It's very gross. Wait. Yes. I'm the only one who who carved a pumpkin for the pumpkin carving contest. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't follow the spirit of the assignment. Yeah. You know, you're just yeah. following the letter of the law. Oh, it's a pumpkin, and I carved something. Yeah. Right. And you know, my mom calls me pumpkin, so I technically did pumpkin carving too. Yeah. And I don't know the difference between a watermelon and a pumpkin. So technically, like from a scientific standpoint, I did yeah. carve a pumpkin. Yeah, I think, I don't... I think we're, all, we're all in the running again. Yeah, except for you, Dr. London. I don't, I can't, I don't know what to call this. Yeah. To call this, this a, a pumpkin like a pumpkin. disaster. Yeah, it's a... a I... It's... Could I rename mine real quick? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Sure. Swamp mos- monster. Swamp monster. Oh, I see that now. Oh, I see it. Yeah, that's that's a total swamp monster. That's, I mean, it's a, All right. you did a terrible job, but I, I, I see what you're going for. Okay, yeah, okay. It look, it's a swamp monster that looks exactly like Einstein. Yeah, see, now right? you can't stop thinking it looks like Einstein. I still don't understand the growth coming out of his mouth like that, but you know what? It's... Have you seen? You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna let it go. You know, you're still you're still a kid. You're growing up, so it's not gonna be perfect. I understand that. Yeah, good good job, pal. Yeah, good job, kid. Okay. Good job, bud. Th- yeah, I get. I guess. Thank you. Um, 
So I guess that, uh, so we'll just submit these to the judges. And so the way we do that, if I remember, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the instructions here say... Uh, Catapult. We, we put, yeah, we cat, we put them all in the backpack, as you said earlier, put that in the, the catapult. And then, because we want to keep our distance, um, just launch it. And uh, we should get the results depending on what survives, because that's how... That's part of the contest, yeah. is what so survives the catapulting. DJ Dylan, can you crank up the catapult? Yes. And here I'll type in the configurations, latitude and longitude. Oh, well. All right, and distance and angle and max height and velocity. And color of backpack. Let's go ahead and select... Like a let's do like a green camo one. I remember the year when they didn't have the color put in. I know. And then let's go ahead and do let's uh let's get something embroidered on it. Um like let's do our initials. So we'll just do all of our initials. Okay. This monogram. Yeah, and JB, then let's, JBJ. JBJ. Uh okay. And then, all right, now we're going to choose the strap color. Okay, let's see. It's a brown. I think that goes good with the green camo. F- f- fuchsia. I want, I want fuchsia. Okay, we'll go fuchsia. So we're going to go fuchsia on the backpack strap color. Okay, and now we're going to go zipper speed. I'm going to say medium because I think sometimes when it's too fast, you can kind of like get your finger caught in it. Yeah, that's um, true. And... Yeah. I think that's that's probably enough detail okay, okay, okay. for, for them right. to work with. All right, DJ Dylan, hit the catapult button. Oh, and there it goes. Wow. Oh, okay. There was a bird in the way. Ooh, my finger hit the bird. That's ironic. That is. Okay. Well, I feel like we've we've made a lot of progress today. Um. All right, I guess now's the time to sort of let's let's wrap things up. Uh, thank you to oh, do we have to do we close the chore, shut down the to, ch- chore wheel? Uh, I think we this, just we shoot it until it stops spinning. Okay, dude, Dylan, can you shoot the chore wheel? Oh, there we go. Oh wow, that's that's tough to see. Okay, um, all right. Well, thank you Why is to. It bleeding? Everyone who came here today, uh, thank you to Joe the Bro Johnson. Um, do you have any uh, any way for you know listeners to follow you to to hear what's you know to keep up with you? Oh yeah, um, Joe Five Legs on Twitter. Okay, all right, and um, any, let's see. Here's our producer Cameron. Thank you for helping us out today absolutely dr too. london and uh real quick we've got to figure out your costume and i already got the answer for you dr london i know what you're going as we've we've brought him up so many times and he you know you said he was a hero of yours and i, I know he's a hero of mine too it's dr ox you got to go as dr ox i think everyone will think that's super cool everyone at the party is going to think that's just a laugh riot and obviously, as you know, he wears sort of, I wouldn't call it a poncho because it doesn't have armholes like a poncho. It's more like a receptacle liner. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm not like Einstein was the hero I mentioned. No, you said like something about like a genius guy. And some sort of growth coming out of his mouth. And that, I mean, these two things describe Dr. Ox. Okay. Uh, I guess, you know, we'll wait and see what, what it looks like. Um, you know, I, I might be busy on Saturday. You know what I mean? So. I, I don't. Maybe I won't. Know what you mean. Okay. But. All right, well, anyway, thank you to our producer, Cameron. Uh, thank you once again to Joe the Bro Johnson for, for coming you. on the podcast. Thank you to DJ Dolan the House. Uh.
I'm Joe the Bro Johnson, and I have a 90-year-old voice box implanted into my 20-year-old bro body. Like, like split down right down the middle between Mary Poppins and the Grinch. My name is LondonSmith.com, and this has been the Jock Doc Podcast. See ya. You paddle out from the shore, adjusting with the paddle just so, in order to be in the dead center of the pond. After all, if you plan to haunt this thing with your ghost, you cannot be asymmetrical about it. You stop to write that down in your ghosting journal. Yes. Yes, your ghost will hate asymmetry. Brilliant stuff. As you mentally prepare to jump in the water while holding a rock And making it a point to not hold a big breath, you panic. The unfinished business! Ah, you fumble through your belongings, grinning as you imagine them floating around the pond when you become a ghost. And you fish out your Game Boy. You have one more match before beating the Pokemon League, and you make it a point to save there without playing any more. With that unfinished business remarkably incomplete, you try to stand up in the boat, Lose your balance, and you fall into the water, making you lose confidence in yourself. Wishing to be a very confident ghost, you decide to try again tomorrow. Speaking of doing things with confidence, don't forget to leave a five-star review of the Jock Talk podcast in which you share about your attempts at joining a paranormal world. And consider supporting us by becoming a patron on the Jock Talk podcast Patreon. And while you're at it, go ahead and share the Jock Doc podcast with a friend or foe. You can send them a link to your favorite episode, or just send them our handy website, jockdocpodcast.com. And don't forget to take a peek at our posts on social media. We are at Jock Doc Podcast. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.